Hello, hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, you may be asking us, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Because we have many great Christian daily devotionals in the body of Christ, many great Christian books. Why have I chosen to share this particular one? The reason I'm sharing this particular daily devotional is because as I prepared to enter into the year 2020, which was two years ago, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on YouTube to be very specific. So I shared the devotional in 2020 and in 2021. And in this year, 2022, I resumed sharing from the month of July onwards as the Spirit of God instructed me. Now, all those videos from 2020 are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle is Temi Agedo. Temi Agedo. I will encourage you to view the videos and please do subscribe, you know, as you visit. Now, how did I get to know Pastor Adeboye? He led me to Christ in October 1997, many years ago, when I was an undergraduate in the University of Lagos in Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor Adeboye's unique style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures from the Bible, he'll give you a memory verse, and when you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is saying to the person who's reading the daily devotional on that particular day. Praise God. Now, today is Sunday, October the 16th, and I know many of us are gathered in church for the service. And the Bible says that God did not say to the house of Jacob to seek him in vain. He has called us to inherit a blessing. So God's going to bless us today for appearing before God in Zion. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing this daily devotional in church. Now, let's go straight into the daily devotional. Today, like I said, it's Sunday, October the 16th. And the title of today's daily devotional is very interesting. It's titled... Fear God. Fear God. You know, um, and as I read this, so many scriptures came to my heart. One of them is in Psalm 114. It says, Tremble thou art at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Amen. Now, the scripture I'm reading is taken from the book of Psalms. Today, we're reading just one verse. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Verse 14, and may the Lord bless us today with his word in Jesus' name. So, Psalm 25, verse 14, I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version. Many of us know the scripture. It says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant covenant. Like he showed Daniel. The Bible says, And then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision praise god fear god what does it mean to fear god it doesn't mean uh, you know when you're afraid you know like when you're afraid of something no that's what it, that's not what it means it means to stand in awe to reverence amen and the memory verse is taken from job 28 28 very easy to remember job 20 28 28 and it says unto man he said behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. The Bible says we should get wisdom, and in all our getting, we should get understanding. And what this memory verse is saying is that the fear of the Lord is wisdom, you know, and to the, when you depart from evil. Is understanding I mean, that's the sign that you have understanding the, the thing is that many people many christians we know the unbelievers some of them don't even fear god more than mm, the christian so some christians don't fear god because the fear of the lord is to depart from evil you know hmm. okay so pastor then says that i have heard some funny theories concerning the fear of god some people believe that when the bible says fear god it doesn't really mean that you should fear him it actually means that you should just reverence him. And pastor says, I don't know which Bible you are reading, but my Bible says fear God, period. Hebrews 12, 29 says that he's a consuming fire. Who is not afraid of fire? Even a mad dog, when he sees fire, would run. The Bible says in Proverbs 1, 7, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The Bible says that we should receive grace wherein we may serve God acceptably. In that Hebrews 12, 29. 
so that we should serve God with reverence and godly fear. Amen. We should serve God with reverence and with godly fear. Why? Because God is a consuming fire. God is not joking, you know. Um, Jesus Christ said something. He said, um, do not fear those who have the power to destroy the body. But I will tell you who you should fear. Fear God who has the power to destroy both body and soul in hell. That is the person that we should fear. Fear means that reverence. You know, <laughs> um, we stand in awe of him. We tremble at his presence because he's the almighty God. You know, Moses said, I'm, I'm, I'm exceedingly... Uh, um, he said, I'm exceedingly afraid. I, I, I exceedingly fear at his presence. You know, I exceedingly tremble. You know, because God is awesome. He's like a, consu he's a consuming fire. He's merciful, yet he's a consuming fire. So you choose the sides you want to see. But we must fear God. Um, in Ecclesiastes, you know, when after Solomon had written everything he wanted to write, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all man's duty man's that's all that's required of man fear god and keep his commandment this is the whole duty of man so fearing god means that we have respect we have we stand in awe of his majesty and his power the fear hmm, the fear of the lord like in um, isaiah chapter 11 you know, when Isaiah was, he saw the Messiah and he said, the seven spirits of God, he said, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. So seven spirits of God. But there is one that was at the top, the spirit of the Lord, which is also the spirit of power. Then he began to dualize them. So wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, and the knowledge and the fear of God. So you can have wisdom and you know they work together wisdom and understanding you can have can you can have might but might does not work on its own it needs counsel and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the lord work together so in somewhere in proverbs it says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and understanding you understand so the fear of the lord is what brings knowledge so you may have 25 degrees but if you do not know the lord your degrees are not use, not useful the, the most important knowledge you can have is the fear of the lord or the spirit of holiness amen the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction the bible's above the bible verse above is saying that if there is any iota of wisdom in you at all you will fear this god thus if you see someone who doesn't fear god yet claims to be wise he's only deceiving himself you know, so if you don't believe in God, if you, you, you are it, you say there's no God. The fool has said in his heart there's no God. That's uh, that is a an ex that is a sign that you don't know anything that you are or you are, you're foolish. Okay, so because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In in that Isaiah eleven, it says the spirit of the fear of God, the reverential and obedient fear of the lord the bible says that god made jesus christ a quick understanding in the fear of the lord and he did not judge after the sight of his eyes or after the hearing of his ear but he judged righteous righteous judgment so i always pray that god make make us make me of quick understanding in the fear of god fear god fear god fear the fear of god is what makes us to depart from evil the fear of god if you fear god there are some things that you will not try the things that people do in church you know dipping their hands into the offering you know, um, having extramarital affairs. If you fear God, you will not do those kind of things. So we need a fresh baptism of the fear of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, my question to you, Pastor says, is do you fear God? I want you to think about that question very well before you answer. Do you really fear him? If you truly fear him, you will not be disobeying his commandments. Amen. In Proverbs 3, 7, it says that be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Hophni and Phinehas, the two children of Eli the priest, they did not fear God. They were Christians. Let me just put it like that. You know, they were priests. They were standing in the office of the priest. They did not fear God, so they despised his offerings and they were having illicit affairs with the women at the temple gates. You know, at the, at the, the gate of the temple. Oh, can you imagine? These are supposed to be children, priest, the priest's children. They were Christians. They did not fear God. And when God came down, he, the two of them were destroyed. You know, 
So, but that's not our portion. Fear God. Hmm. The moment you dip your hands into sin, you are telling God that you don't fear him. That you are wise in your own eyes. It may look as if God is powerless now because you committed a sin and he did nothing. But I advise you to stop it because his wrath is coming for all sinners. In Romans 1.18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I told the testimony many years ago. I just got it saved. There was one of our youth leaders in the church where I was. And you know, he was a very nice guy. And um, we just got news that he died in his sleep. He was a very young guy. You know, he was the youth leader, one of the youth ex, ex, ex calls in those days. And he had died in his sleep. And who brought the information was his girlfriend. When, they, you know, they were sleeping together in the house. She just woke up and found him dead on the bed. So they were not married. So, you know, things like that happen in church. It should not be, you know. Um, as I was reading this, I remembered in the book of Genesis, you know, when they were, when they, uh, they were describing God, they described him... Jacob described God as the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac. What you fear, who you fear is your God. He described him as the fear of Isaac. He didn't just call him the God of Isaac. He called him the fear of Isaac twice in the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. So, pastor is saying that us, us people, people sinning is a sign that they don't fear God. Is a sign that they don't fear God. And the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in righteousness. You see, because we don't know the day and the time, we need a fresh baptism of the fear of God, that God will help us to fear him. Not a, 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 a fear, you know, he loves us, you know. Because he loves us, we, 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 we reverence his, his majesty. And we do not do this because God doesn't like it. The children of Israel, they didn't fear God. If they feared God, they would not be doing the things that they were doing. Don't be among the fools who have chosen not to fear God. You want to be wise. You want God to share secrets with you. You want to avoid God's wrath. Fear him and show, that in, and show this in your complete and prompt obedience to his word. Amen. Amen. So we need a fresh baptism of the spirit of the fear of God. The Bible says, do we now continue in sin that grace may abound? But you see, when we come to church, God gives us the grace as we hear his word. We are washed with pure water and there's a stirring up of, of God in us. You know, So we must draw near to the house of God to hear and not to give the sacrifice of food. So we need the fresh baptism of the fear of God because we don't know the time and the hour if a man dies in his sin there's no repentance in the grave amen and the bible says that judgment is going to start from the house of god so we have to we need a fresh baptism of the spirit of the fear of god and as we study the word of god that spirit rubs off on us it's also called the spirit of holiness amen let us and the key point here is if you have any iota of wisdom at all you will fear god and stay away from sin it is lack of the fear of God that makes a man not to want to give his heart, heart to Christ because he doesn't know who he's dealing with. You know, a day is coming in righteousness when you and I will stand before our maker and our eyes will have respect for the Holy One of Israel. Some people don't have respect for him, but on that day, they don't, they don't fear him. But on that day, they will know that God is hev his God in heaven and on earth and under the earth and that he's the creator of all things. So if you are listening and you're not born again, that's a sign that you do not fear God. And the wrath of God is revealed is, is, is revealed against all form of unrighteousness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. The Bible says you sent your word. It healed them and delivered them from destruction. The Bible says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you baptize us afresh with the spirit of the fear of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, fill us with the power of God, the fear of God in the mighty name of Jesus that causes a man to depart from evil in the mighty name of Jesus. Fill us with the spirit of obedience to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, we have a strong desire to do all that is in your heart and in your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says that those that honor you, you will honor and those that despise you, you will likely esteem. Father, we choose to honor your word. We choose to be obedient to your word. We choose to do all that is in your heart and in your mind all the days of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we lift up our hands to you and we ask that you pour out the spirit of the fear of God upon every one of us who are listening today in the name of Jesus. 
Father, Lord, we ask for the reverential and the obedient fear of God to take control of our lives from this day forth and forevermore, all the days of our lives. Help us, help us to walk in the fear of God so that we will now describe God as the fear, our fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. And may God bless you with his word as you're in church today. And may God fill you with all the fullness of God in Jesus' name. And thank you again, Pastor, for sharing this in your church. May the Holy Spirit bless you and your work in Jesus' name. Have a good Sunday and God bless you.